Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a little bit of a while. I did not get to film those last two um, holiday looks that I wanted to do. The holidays just came about just so fast. Before I knew it, um, my nephew was in town from Los Angeles. It was, and it was just, you know, a steady, constant, every day uh, doing stuff with him, which was super, super fun. And um, it was sad to see him, see him leave and go back home. Los Angeles is now his home, I suppose. Um, but anyway, uh, a super fun Christmas just spending it with my family. Uh, we ended up going to Biloxi um, to the Beau Rivage. My brother, I know I've probably mentioned this before, he is a bass player for the house band Trigger Proof at the Beau Rivage at the, is it the 875 Club? <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but it's at the Beau Rivage, and it's just a little intimate little club. He's there from, for sure, from sun Sunday night through Tuesday nights, um, and then he's home, and then he has to leave. He usually comes home on Wednesdays, and then he leaves on Sundays to go back to um, Biloxi to play. But in between that, he's contracted through MGM, um, so wherever... MGM books them, uh, whatever casinos that they're associated with, um, he sometimes goes goes there. They, they travel um, a lot to Florida. They travel to, um, they also go to Tunica, Mississippi, um, and they play at a casino over there. But yeah, so anyway, Silo Rent, we um, kind of went like a little overnight mini trip and just kind of celebrated with him because um, due to his new schedule, um, he's not, he wasn't going to be home for Christmas. So um, we all went up there. And it was so much fun. So anyway, <laughs> so yeah, so um, so yeah. Now it's the new year. So happy new year, everyone. S hope everyone had a great start so far. I'm super excited for the new year. Every year, I just hope that it just is a better and better year. But anyway, I'm rambling. I guess because I haven't talked to y'all in a while. But today is going to be a book talk um, because I finished a book while I was actually listening to it because I did. Um, Audible was doing a two for one credit kind of thing. So I always try to get those because it's very worth, very well worth your Audible credit. Because uh, I only get, I get like two, two credits a month. Um, so whenever they are running some kind of deal, I try my hardest to jump on that and find, find books. I listen to them daily, on a daily basis. If I'm not listening to um, an Audible book, I'm listening, I'm listening to podcasts. So every day, every day, every day. So uh, anyway, so yeah, I took advantage of that, and I got, um, I actually got one, which, um, I actually got a book, <laughs> let me let me try to word that right, that I, I already have on my shelf. So I have the actual book, but I think I will do better listening to it. In fact, there's another book, um, I'm going to do the same too, because it's a really, really big book, and for some reason... These really, really thick books just take me forever to get through because, I mean, I, I enjoy the read. It's just like like you, what like I'm reading right now, You by Carolyn Kepnes, and I, I'm loving it. Uh, although I will say I'm kind of losing interest a little bit here and there, um, but it's just, it, there's so much in the book. It's like hard for me to sit down and just like take it all, like sit down and read and take it all in. I do better with that much information while I'm, I do better multitasking. Let me just say that. So while I have a book in my ear, I'm, I'm better at getting other stuff done. And so, so I went ahead and I got it on Audible. Um, that'll probably be, probably be my next book talk. And then hopefully we'll get to talk about you because I really do want to talk about that book because it's just all over the place. It's, it's, it's insane. But today we're going to talk about, talk about <laughs> friend request. Um, it is by, Laura Marshall uh, is narrated by Elaine Claxton. It is eleven. It was eleven hours and ten minutes. I listened to it in two days, two not not even two not two full days, just um, like probably like one whole day, a good eight hours, um, and then and then the next day I just I kind of finished it up. So anyway, um, I'll show y'all what. The cover of this book looks like on Audible. That's what it looks like on Audible. Um, I think there's some other covers um, available as well. Really, really enjoyed this book. We'll get into it in just a minute, but um, so I'm going to show y'all what I'm going to be using today on my face because obviously I need to get ready. Something something needs to happen right here. Um, I haven't worn makeup and I can't tell y'all how long. It's been, 
it's been so long. Like I've, I've worn it so much over the holidays. Um, I'm just kind of giving my face a break and it really, it feels like I want, think I want to go get a facial or some sort of, um, maybe a scrub or a peel. I'm not sure, but like I'm, I'm super, super oily, but my nose is like peeling. It's like got dry patches, like just on the end. And then my face just feels kind of like just rough. Um, that's the best way I can explain it. I just think I need like a, just a good facial. I don't know. Uh, something needs to happen. But anyway, um, I wanted to point out a few products that um, I've been liking lately. And, and then what we're going to do today. I think I've actually already done kind of this routine before. But it's just my go-to easy everyday hurry up and get my makeup done when I just have a full day of stuff that I need to do. Which is today. Um, so I do want to mention that I kind of gave up on my Urban Decay uh, eye primer. It the last time I used it, I don't know if it's just because maybe it was getting old, but it I creased and really bad, and I was like, okay, we're not we're not having that. So I pulled out my Milani eyeshadow primer that I bought for um, a drugstore video that I did, and I've always heard good things about it, but I've never like really bought it and used it. So for the drugstore thing, I wanted to pick it up and just see how much I really liked it, and I kind of been using it like here and there. And so when I got rid of the Urban Decay, I pulled this out, and this has been phenomenal. And it's only like maybe four dollars. It's just definitely less than five dollars, and it's 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 awesome. It it does have like a tint to it, like a nude, um, you know, like a nude color base kind of, um, but but works wonders, and it's less than five dollars. Um, also, uh, a new moisturizer for my lips. I, I've talked. I talked before um, about this lip balm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get back into the swing of this. I promise. Um, these are the Sephora lip balms. I love these things. My absolute favorite ones are the almond and the coconut. Um, I did try. I got the banana and I tried it, but it's not as moisturizing. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to use it up because I don't think I'm gonna repurchase it again. But every time I try to go and get my almond or my coconut, it's they're always sold out. Those are like the two most popular ones. So the last time I was at Sephora, I went ahead and I picked up the macadamia. Um, so I was like, well, let me just give this one a try because they do have, um, they do have ones that have color in them, which I have one in my purse, but I'm actually not wild about it. I keep it in my purse just to, you know, freshen up. It adds a little color, you know, whatever. Um, but I don't think I'm going to repurchase it. But um, I really like just the, like, the lip balm one. It's just the plain lip balm. Ones. This one is amazing. It is, it is a little bit thicker. I don't really remember the, cons like, if the almond one and the coconut were this, like, thick in consistency. Um, this is what it, what it looks like. It smells like macadamia, but um, they all kind of smell like what they represent. But this this one, I don't, I don't know, it's a lot more moisturizing, definitely than the banana one. So I'm always reaching for this one, especially like while I'm doing my makeup just to keep my lips moist. Um, sometimes I'll blot it off because it's just, it's super moisturizing. So I just wanted to mention that this is the macadamia and the Sephora lip balms. They are awesome. If you can grab either this one, the almond, or the coconut, those are my like my favorite. Um, those are my favorite ones. Okay, so I just wanted to rant a little bit about that. Um, what else? <laughs> okay, so today just super simple, um, usual super simple look. While we talk about this book, so I'm going to use my Mac Prep and Prime, of course. I'm going to just use my Mac um, Mineralized Skin Finish today. This isn't. This is not really full coverage. It just kind of gives a base kind of coverage just to even things out. Um, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna show y'all how I use that. Um, I also, hold that and pull it out, but I'm gonna use my It Bye Bye Pores. This is the Illumination Pressed Powder. I kind of like to highlight so, a few areas with that. And then for my entire look, I'm gonna be using my NARS um, little palette right here. This was a limited edition palette. I don't think they have it anymore, but um, this is what I'm be using today. But you can still get these products. I'm pretty sure. May I don't. I'm not sure about the highlighter. I know it was new when this palette came out, but um, I'll check it out and if I can find it, I'll link it. Um, but you can definitely get the Orgasm Blush. You can definitely get the Laguna Bronzer. So um, this was just a little limited edition palette that had everything in one. I actually brought this to Houston with me. Um, and this is what I use to like do my makeup every day. 
I do have um, a new mascara, uh, which is just a little sample that I, I'm, I was trying out, but I absolutely love it. Uh, so um, that will kind of be the highlight of our um, book talk today, I guess. And uh, I this isn't this isn't new, but I haven't worn it in a while. This is from Mac. Um, this is the I don't know exactly what they call these, but it's like a lip pencil, um, like a lip balm with a color to it kind of thing. It's, the color is Make Me Proud. So I'm going to be wearing that today. I completely forgot about this. It, it's been in my drawer, and um, Debbie, my best friend, kind of mentioned it not too long ago, and I was like, you know what? I need to pull that out. So I pulled that out, and I'm going to wear that today. So, okay, so let's jump in and get started. So I've already primed my eyes, and um, I've been using my MAC Prep and Prime to kind of prime my whole face. Pull in my mirror a little closer. Do I need to pull y'all in just a little? Just a tad. Just a tad. Um, okay, so a friend request. So, it, it, of course, it starts off with a friend request. and a Friend request. Um, I did do a Goodreads book review on it, so if you want to check that out, definitely go check that and follow me on Goodreads. I'll have that link down below right after I finish. I try to do those right after I finish um, reading. I try to do these right after I finish reading, but it never <laughs> it never happens that way because I usually finish reading them at night because that's mostly um, when I do my actual reading, but um, when I do, when I listen, it's just usually at a at a odd a odd time. I've usually like already done my makeup or whatever. Anyway, that's not the point in the story. <laughs> so of course they start off with um, a friend a friend request. You have your main character Louise, um, and this is pretty much where the story how the story is told. It's told from from like her point of view, I guess first person or whatever you would call it. Now they do have some little snippets in between like like in between your reading that it doesn't really warn you. I read on Goodreads that it's um, it's in italics when you're reading in the book. So it's like someone's, it's almost like someone's thoughts, but it's told in third person. So it's, it's usually right after either she meets up with someone. So you don't know, like throughout the whole book, you don't know who this person is that's, that this part of the book is talking about. It could be I kept thinking it was like multiple different characters in the book because she meets up with so many um, different people in the book from like her high school days and things like that. And it could totally be, it could totally be um, any of those people. But I think it ends up being just one person from what I gather when you get to the end of the book. It kind of like sums that, sums that up a little bit. But then again, I'm not, I'm not positive. I'm still a little, still a little... I don't know uh, on that part, but I guess I guess it is. Uh, I'm guessing that it is. It's just all it's just all about one person, but it makes you think that it's about these different characters in the book, which is which is really genius, I guess. Um, this book kept me guessing the entire time. In the beginning of the book, I was like, "Oh my god, this is this is so easy. I know who it is already." So obviously, okay, so she gets a friend request from um, someone who has already passed. And it is and it is a former friend of hers. Kind of a former friend. So of course she freaks out a little bit and she's like, what is this? This has got to be somebody, you know, playing a joke on me or, or something. Well, immediately she has like, like bad thoughts about okay, someone, someone knows what happened and someone's trying to get back at me. So obviously, you get all this right in the beginning. So obviously someone knows something. Reminds me of the podcast. <laughs> uh, some, someone knows something. I think that's what it's called. Someone knows something. Really good podcast, by the way. Um, go check it out. So the friend request comes from, I'm kind of backstepping a little bit. It comes from uh, Maria Weston. Um, wants to be her friend on Facebook. And this this person is, we're guessing at this point, deceased. I had moments in the book where I was like, is she deceased? You know, because there were, there were moments that I wasn't sure because of this whole third person little section um, that they would throw in every now and then. Uh, when I first heard it, 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 it like 
caught me by surprise. So I had to like go back and like figure out what, what was going on because the story is being told through Louise's point of view. And then all of a sudden we're talking in third person about a totally different situation. So I'm like, wait, wait, <laughs> what is happening? So just warning you about that. When that does happen, like don't freak out. It's totally part of the book. You might want to rewind just to kind of, uh, if you listen to it, you might want to rewind just to see <laughs> what's happening. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's what I did. I kind of like rewound it a little bit, went back and was like, what, what, what is this? So yeah, that happens throughout the book. So she gets this friend request and she immediately think, immediately thinks something's, something's up. So, um, she ponders upon it and in the end she goes ahead and she accepts it, you know, cause this is bothering her. So obviously either she's done, she's done something or she knows she knows what has happened to this, you know, to this person or whatever. Um, of course, she thinks it's her fault. This, it, her, the, this person's death, Maria's death, was all her fault. If, if this person is dead, even so, so then that's kind of when things start to evolve in the book. Um, it takes a little bit to get started, not too much. It, it pretty much jumps right into it. She, she kind of like doesn't. If I remember cor correctly, she freaks out for a little bit, but then she's like, this has got to be like a prank. Somebody, somebody knows something. Um, but then she goes back and she's like, I need to, I need to figure this out. So she accepts the friend request and she kind of goes throughout Facebook and looking up people from high school, um, like her old friends. And she's desperately wanted to be with the in crowd. Um, in her high school days because apparently she wasn't she wasn't like your typical popular girl Kind of persona, I guess she I think she was maybe a little curvier than the rest of the girls um, She wasn't quite on their level. So she would do anything and everything to kind of Keep herself in that category in that um, cool kids category, I guess uh, so anyway this new girl comes to town she comes to to their school this is the maria character and um long story short louise really really likes her and they seem to have a really good time together her the friends that she's kind of friends with now don't really acknowledge her much in, in fact you don't really hear too much about there's like three girls i guess and you don't really hear too much about um two of them and i think one of them's name is joanne I'm not sure about <laughs> the other one, Claire, maybe. Um, and then there's Sophie. Sophie is the one that she tried, that Louise tries to definitely stay friends with because Sophie's the one that she's like, I guess, maybe the leader of the pack. I don't know. Um, it's like when, when Sophie, Sophie kind of ignores her sometimes. And sometimes if she doesn't have anyone to hang out with, basically, she has Louise by her side. So, pretty, you know, you're pretty typical high school kind of drama kind of thing. The first person she tries to contact, um, she tries to go on Maria's page to see if she's friends with anybody else, you know, so she can kind of start fi trying to figure out what, what is going on. Is this a prank? Um, what is happening? Is she not dead? Is she, you know... Is she like trying to get back at me at, at what I've done? So obviously she's done something, her and her friends. But she only sees one person that's friends with Maria. And his name is Nathan something or another. Um, you learn more about him uh, later on. It's not, a, I guess it's sort of part of the story. I'll kind of quickly give y'all the gist of that. So Maria has switched schools before. She's She had problems at another school um, with, I guess, um, stalking uh, from this from this guy. And um, this is the guy, Nathan. And so he put out bad rumors about her and um, it was starting to af affect her and uh, her schooling and things like that. So the mom took her out of that school and put her in this school to try to um, help kind of start her start her over so, uh, so she wouldn't have to deal with that. But um, so anyway, that's where 
Louise and Sophie and Joanne and Claire. I don't, I don't really remember the third girl. I could, Claire could totally be wrong. Yeah, so they kind of make Maria's life sort of miserable throughout high school is kind of what you get throughout the story. Um, but at one point, like b before all this happens, uh, Louise really likes, she gets to hang out with Maria a little bit and she ends up really liking Maria. And, um, but this is not, if you're going to be friends with Maria, you can't be part of Sophie and her clan. So that's where the decision had to come in and, you know, being 15, 16, however old, um, they were, I think it was 15 and 16 at this time. Um, all you worried about is like being in with the cool kids, you know? And so she, she made that decision upon herself to, um, you know, stay, not, not be friends. So, uh, Maria to stay friends with, um, Sophie and the crew. So of course, for some reason, I'm sure it's told in the book. I don't really remember, but for some reason, Sophie and the gang need, want to, um, start like bullying her basically playing jokes on her playing pranks on her because they've heard um, The things that have happened to her in her previous high school, so they are Just just being mean girls basically and They do they end up doing this this really really bad thing and that's where it kind of builds up in the story so you like you you're going back from I think 1989 is when, when they were in school to 2016 when, I guess, the story was written. So you go back and forth to those times and it gradually gets to the point of what happened. And um, when you find out what happened, you're kind of like, okay. Um, you know, it's not, it's, I'm, okay, I'm not going to say, <laughs> I'm not going to say more in case you want to read it. Def definitely read it. It's a very good read. Definitely, definitely keeps you on your toes. Um, cause the entire time I kept thinking, especially in the beginning, I was like, I know who did this. I know I've got this. Um, but then a little while later, halfway through the book, I'm like, okay, no, um, well, it's gotta be this person. Uh, and then at the end, when you get the story of who it really is, you're like, well, okay, I wasn't even thinking about this person because this person doesn't play a huge role in the book at all so that's that what was so genius about it what uh, that i think anyway um i mean this person plays a part in the role in in the in the book when i first met this person in the book in in the book i was thinking this person isn't isn't a bad person you know, i kind of like this person this person is so minor um that I just wasn't expecting it in the end. Um, even even when the end came and this person was around and Louise was talking to this person, I wasn't thinking it. I was thinking something totally different, and then it, then then it just like hit me, uh, and I was like, "Whoa, it's, that's crazy!" But uh, so yeah. Uh, it was it was really 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 good. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. I highly recommend it, especially in, if you're into those psychological thriller books. Like obviously I am. I really I really enjoyed it. Like I said, it kind of kept me on my toes. I was just very surprised at the end. And um, it it ends on a weird kind of note. I I actually had to go back a little bit and um, and see what happened to this character. <clears throat> I'm not sure if this character is missing, is in prison, is dead. I'm still not sure. I like I went back and I, and I was like, I, like like you you get you get kind of what happened to this character, but there's no like it doesn't to me it didn't feel like there was a final final word as to what happened to this character in the end um and and the that was the only thing about about the book like when louise was with this character of course she ends up you know face to face with this character and how she 
gets away from this character, it was very like, it was just kind of like this character went away. And then all of a sudden you're trying to figure out, wait, what, what happened to this character? And they kind of tell you what happens, but I'm still like, I, I don't know. I'm still like on the, on the fence about whether this character is missing in prison or dead. I, I don't know. So if you know, if you've read this book or listened to it, whatever, um, put it in the comments below because I want to know what, what really, what really happened. Cause I'm not certain if they actually caught this person, found this person. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm like super clueless. But, you know, it all ends well, as pretty most of the time these books do. I have read my psychological thrillers to where it doesn't end all happy and well, uh, which is kind of a good twist sometimes. But, yeah, it does kind of end all happy and well. But, um, but yeah, I'm still a little confused at what happened to this character. Like, for real. Like, I know, I know, I don't think she's in, dan in, jan in danger of this character anymore from what I could tell. But, um, but yeah, it's still, it's still, um, I don't know. I don't know y'all. I don't know what happened to this character. So like I said, if you know, put it in the comments below. Um, I haven't really tried to go back through reviews and look at, look at anything. Uh, I guess I probably should have did that like on Goodreads because I did read a few reviews when I was posting my review. But, um, and that was, that was where I learned about the, um, the whole italics thing. I have something on my lip and it is bothering me. Yeah, I learned um, from the reviews about the italics thing because apparently in the real books, the, the third person little parts are in italics. So, so it might be, it might be a little bit better reading the actual book because you might get a better sense of like what happened because I felt like I, I actually had to go back a lot in, in this book, like kind of re, re, re rewind. <laughs> had to kind of rewind a little bit to kind of see what, like, it, like, I guess my mind was trying to keep up with it, and then, and then all of a sudden I was like, wait, how did we get here, um, and who is this person, you know, so she does meet a lot of people, um, uh, in the book, um, like I said, when, when she's, when she's, uh, looking around to see if anybody else's friends request with, or friends with Maria, um, she doesn't find anybody except this Nathan person, which, you find out more about, I told you kind of a little bit about him, but I think there's a little bit more. And, um, but I think that's like the only friend. So you do find out who is behind these friend requests. You do find out about Maria, what, you know, what actually happened. Of course, what, um, Louise thinks she's done. Um, you find out about that, what, what bad thing that apparently she did and then you find out what what really happened so there's like two kind of different scenarios there and then um so yeah so she meets up with with Sophie like in 2016 to see if if she's got this friend request from Maria and of course Sophie did and but she kind of plays it off um like you know like somebody you know somebody's just playing with us or whatever she tries to play cool but really she's you learn in the book that she's like not, she's, it's, it's not sitting well with her. Um, she kind of, she kind of lies about like, of course she was the, you know, the popular kid in high school. Um, and so her life didn't quite turn out like she wants it or like she wanted it. So you do find out some, um, some little truths and lies about Sophie. You don't really get much about the other two girls, maybe a little bit because there is a class reunion, uh, that, Louise goes to, um, so you find out a little bit about the two other girls, um, but really they they don't really play a big part in this at all. Um, in the, and there's some some other characters too. There's some guys that kind of play some roles in this. So yeah, it's it's kind of all over the place. It, it she meets a lot of, a lot of people. She kind of um, reconnects with a lot of people just to find out like what's going on. What do you know? Um, has have you got this friend request kind of thing? And, and it really just eats at her throughout the book. So I, I really enjoyed how the author did that. I like, I really like going back and coming back to present time. 
um, and, and building up to what really happened. I, I really like that. Um, keeps me on my toes and thinking, who could it be? So yeah, really good, fun read. You might want to actually read this book instead of listening to it. I, um, you know, that's, you know, of course, totally up to you. I think you might get a better understanding if you actually read it um, then listen to it because like I say you don't when you're listening these third-person parts just kind of happen upon you and that's what I found myself kind of re rewinding a little bit because it, it all of a sudden Louise is talking about what's going on and then this little segment pops up about something totally different and you're like what what so I kind of had to go back and be like what, where did what did I miss to get to this point but really I didn't miss anything it was just like these little third-person point of views were just kind of thrown in there. So I think you see that better and you get it better if you actually read the book or have the book in front of you maybe or get the book, listen, and you know, whatever you want to do. I'm not telling you how to, how to read it. I'm just saying. Um, it seems like it would have been better if I would just read the actual book. But anyway, um, really, really enjoyed the book. Loved it. I definitely think you should read it whatever kind of way you want to. Uh, that's my just on the story. Yeah, and I'm super excited to kind of get back into my reading game. I kind of lost it for a little while, especially over the holidays. Um, not like just not really having time to read um, and just being like super just worn out by the end of the day and just crashing because that's when I usually do most of my actual reading. So that's my take on that. Um, so let's get into this mascara. I've been holding on to it for too long. This is, who is this? This is by Lancome and this is the Monsieur Big. Monsieur? I'm not, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's just a little bitty sample. I've seen this come out, and I saw some really good reviews on it. I just haven't, like, picked it up. So I ended up getting a sample of it, and, <clears throat> excuse me, I really, really like it. The formula is a little wet, so just be careful with that uh, when you're applying it. Um, the brush is your basic, normal mascara brush. Um sort of a little oversized which I actually kind of like because I feel like those oversized brushes for me just kind of fan out my lashes um I but yeah I've really been enjoying this little sample um but like I said it is sort of a wet formula so just be careful not to get it all over the place because when I first tried this I had it everywhere um especially if you're not wearing eyeliner like I'm not today just be careful not to I mean you can always clean it up, but I try to be super careful. But I just, I just really like it. I just kind of been wearing it um, on a daily basis. It's just a, a good. It's, it's Lancome, so I'm sure it's gonna be up there. I haven't checked the price, but I'm sure it's gonna be around the 35, 30, 35 dollar mark. I really like it, and like I, I like the sort of just. It kind of gives like a natural, easy look to it which is why i kind of been wearing it just like on a daily normal basis i just i apply like two coats and um and i'm good to go i mean i i don't have the greatest lashes in the world and i i like the the way it it does for my lashes it kind of makes some give a little volume to them fans them out a little bit which makes it look like they're fuller Gives them a little bit of length. It's really good stuff. I, I really like this. And of course, my Bottom Lash Mascara. This is a brand new little tube because my other one dried out completely. I had it for over six months, which, which is bad. Um, but every time I went to get it at Sephora, they were sold out of it, so... I should have got my, um, the It Cosmetics one, the tight line, because that's another one, the waterproof one. That's another good, like, bottom lash mascara kind of thing. But I really like the Clinique one. For some reason, it just, it makes my bottom lashes pop. All right, on to the lips. This is probably going to be the longest book talk <laughs> ever. Uh, I just had a lot to say. I'll edit, I'll probably edit a lot of this out, uh. But anyway, this is sort of like a lip balm within itself, so um, you really don't need too much of, like, you know, another lip balm, because this is very moisturizing. And this is in the color, I think I said it in the beginning, but Make Me Proud. 
It's just a very pretty neutral pink. All right, let's do something real quick with this hair. I just wanted to mention, like, I have naturally, this is natural, naturally curly, wavy hair, um, but it's not like a pretty wave or curl. I don't think so anyway. It like, like this, this front piece to me is just nothing but a frizz ball. I, I, I'm not sure what that is. I mean, my whole head is a frizz, a frizzy mess, but that's what I mean by not pretty. Like it doesn't, I don't know. I can't get it to the curl to like really like look pretty. It's just more of like a frizzy kind of mess. Um, but I do have like, like look, I mean, this is crazy. A curl. I think the older I get, the curlier um, it gets because I it used to not be like this at all. But it's different sort of curls. I have loose curls. I have tight curls. It's not consistent. And I even have some straight hairs in there somewhere. Um, so what I normally do when I let my hair air dry like this, it's still, no, I think it's pretty, it's pretty good and dried. Um, what I normally do is um, just kind of take my curling iron and find those not so good curled pieces, especially like this front right here, and I'll curl them a little bit. I won't, you know, keep it on there long, just kind of give it to kind of match whatever curl I got going on. Um, and I usually do that like just throughout the top layer because the bottom layer of my hair is is mostly a big curly cue. Um, but the top, la top layer, not so much to me, is curled here and there, but it's like a mixture of kinky curl with loose curls with straight hair. It's just all over the place. Um, so anyway, that's what I normally do, but today I didn't really feel like putting heat on it. It's, it's, we have crazy weather here, y'all. I just didn't feel like taking the time to put heat to it and straighten it out and then using a straightener. Just, I just didn't feel like it because I'm gonna go outside and it's just gonna do this. This is what it, this is what it does because we have nothing but just humid, funky air in right now. It's just not, it's just not good. So anyway, moving on. So what I do after I, after I would curl it, I'm just not curling it today. Um, this is from Aveda. It's the light element smoothing a fluid. I really like this. I picked this up um, after my last hair appointment because she used it on me. And um, I went ahead and I got it because she was like, it's it's it would be good for your hair because it's, it's not gonna weigh it down, um, but yet it's gonna kind of tame the frizziness. So I use like one pump and I just take it and I scrunch it. Now if I if I'm um if I straighten my hair, I take it and run it like all through my hair. Um especially on the, mostly on the ends and just like a little bit up here where I have some flyaways. But yeah, I just when it's curly like this, I just kind of run run my hand through it and just kind of crunch crunch around just to kind of help I probably should have curled these front pieces because I'm just going to put it back probably up in a, in a little clip in a minute because that's going to get in my eye and that's going to bother the crap out of me. But yeah, if I was going somewhere, you see how it just kind of settles it, settles it down, little tains the frizz a little bit, kind of almost gives it a little bit of a wet look, but not like super 80s style wet look. <laughs> um, but it's very lightweight. Um, it's not gonna weigh, like I said, it's not gonna weigh your hair down. Um, it's not gonna feel greasy. I used one whole, I used one whole pump, and I mean, hands are dry. It's 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 so good. If you have any left on your hands, you can just rub it in. It's it doesn't like you have have that greasy feel. Um, the Paul Mitchell one that I was using had a little, still had a little bit of a greasy feel to it, but it wasn't it wasn't too bad. But I just really. I've really been preferring this stuff and if I feel like it especially in these front pieces I'll take a little bit more of a pump and I'll crunch a little bit more in there I'm not gonna do that today but um, and then I'll take my Aveda air control this is just the light hold hairspray I usually I have the uh, now if I'm really fixing it I really want it to stay whole uh, you know to stay I have the it's another Aveda one it's just like a pump. It's not an aerosol, but this is my favorite. Um, it's it's just it just kind of like kind of finishes off the look. Oh well, it's just stopped up. There we go. <laughs> and I just kind of crunch it in there. It still gives it just a softer hold. It's you know like I said, if you really want your you you really curled it and you really that want it to hold. I don't know if this would be the one to use, but um, I use a totally different one for that. But just to kind of keep it soft and, and staying in place, this is my go-to hairspray. There. 
that'll work for now. Um, but yeah, so, so that's kind of what I've been doing lately just because this weather is just, it's nuts. <laughs> okay, so that's it. I'm going to stop rambling. I hope y'all enjoyed uh, this book this book talk or book review, whatever you want to call it. Not necessarily a review, just sort of more like just talking about it. Um, I guess it's somewhat of, I don't know. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. I just enjoy talking about books. I love, love reading books and I just, I like talking about them afterwards. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, so I hope y'all enjoyed this one. I hope y'all are having a happy, happy beginning of your new year. Um, I'll have everything that I use linked down below as well as a link to the book. Also come follow me on my Goodreads. I post reviews on there all the time. I'll have all my other social medias down below. I'm always on Instagram. I do have a Facebook, but I'm always on Instagram. Uh, I may not post too much on Instagram. I try to post, I'm, tr I'm gonna try to post more. Um, my friend's always on me about that. She's like, you never post anything. I'm like, I, I don't know. I just feel like nobody really cares. Nobody wants to see what I'm doing. Who cares? But I enjoy seeing everybody else, what everybody else is doing. So I guess they would enjoy seeing what I'm, I don't know. But anyway, I'm always on there. So, um, come follow me there. So yeah, that's it. That's all I want to say. So I will see y'all in my next video. Y'all have a great weekend. Bye y'all.